This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Health One. Okay, um, for the Medical Minute, I want to talk about a case that we had on, um, and it was a patient who came in after an ingestion of uh, coracetin HVP, specifically the coracetin cough and cold. Um, so this is actually one of the more widely abused over-the-counter cough and cold medicines, often called CCC or DXM or robotripping you probably heard of. Um, this, the reason that people use the cough and cold product of the coracetin is because it contains dextromethorphan and then chlorpheniramine, which is an antihistamine. Um, it doesn't contain any Tylenol or Advil or anything like that, so um, people perceive it, I think, as being like safer um, and it contains kind of just the products that they're looking for. So how it acts is, so uh, dextromethorphan is a cough suppressant. Um, it does, it is structurally similar to opioids, although it doesn't have any of the analgesic properties. At high doses, it does bind to the opioid receptors, uh, so it can cause that CNS and respiratory depression. Uh, dextromethorphan also binds to the PCP site on the NMDA receptor, so it causes hallucinations, um, it can cause sedation, hyperexcitability, euphoria, um, and blocks serotonin reuptake, which causes that. It also alters dopamine transmission, so you get some of like the movement, uh, just tonic reaction. And then in terms of chlorpheniramine, the antihistamine, um, it, it's less sedating than something like Benadryl, but it ha it's an anticholinergic, so again, causes that like somnolence, and agitation, confusion hallucination. So why are these things dangerous? So for the opioid effect, although it doesn't produce the high or the analgesic effect, it does cause that respiratory or CNS depression. At very high doses of the dextromethorphan, it can cause serotonin syndrome. Um, and then it has a bromide component. Um, bromide used to, it, it works on GABA receptors. Um, and so it used to actually be used as an anticonvulsant. So you've got that working and there's something called bromism. If someone is chronically abusing uh, dextromethorphan bromide or they're on something that they have it long term. Um, it causes behavioral changes, hallucinations, psychosis, weight loss, slurred speech. Something called bromoderma, which is like a rash all over the body and the face, and it can cause, it cause liver damage too. Um, and then chlorpheniramine at high doses gives that anticholinergic effect, which can cause seizures and cardiac dysfunction. So um, how we would treat that is um, a lot of just supportive care. That's what we ended up doing for this patient. So for the bromide, just enhanced elimination with diuretics or with fluid, IV fluids, possible, uh, possibly dialysis. For dextromethorphan, it's a lot of symptomatic management, so benzos for the seizures and control the agitation. You can also treat the serotonin syndrome. You can actually use Narcan if the patient it starts to experience respiratory depression. Um, and then for the chlorpheniramine, kind of the same way we'd manage any other anticholinergic toxicity, symptomatic, airway protection, benzos for seizures, uh, sodium bicarb, and then we do have the antidepsystigmine uh, if we want to use that as well. We are on a quest to provide the world with free medical education. Please help us out by rating us on iTunes, following us on social media, and subscribing to our newsletter at emergencymedicalminute.com.